If you think you drive a baller car, there's a chance you're actually missing out because one of the most luxurious cars on the road is one that we can't get here in the States. I'm talking about the legendary Toyota Century, which is on today's menu selection as a delicious example of forbidden fruit. The Toyota Century is Japan's premier luxury car. It's what ambassadors are driven in. It's what heads of state are driven in. It's what the president of Toyota slides into when he's been driven around as well. This thing is like the Mercedes 600, but built for and by the Japanese. It started back in 1967, and now the Century is only in its third generation. The first version ran for 30 years before getting a slight redesign and a totally different engine option. Initially, the Century was powered by a compact V8. It was a 3 liter for a few years, then a 3.4 liter, and finally a 4 liter V8. When Toyota launched the second gen Century in 1997, the engine gained in size and cylinder count. Thus, the Century is the first Japanese passenger car to get a V12 engine. That's right, Toyota stuffed its 5 liter 1GZ FE V12 engine into these things. And now the car has returned to its V8 roots for its current third generation version. This latest iteration was shown off in 2017 and went on sale in 2018. It's now a V8 hybrid and produces 425 horsepower and it's more luxurious than ever. The back seats recline while also heating and massaging the passengers. There's a 20 speaker sound system and there's even an LCD TV to watch your favorite movie while you're being shuttled around town. Beyond the basics of the luxury of four of these things, however, it's impressive how they're built. These aren't cranked out by the hundreds on an assembly line. These are nearly fully hand assembled cars that are fully checked out before they're shipped out. Master craftsmen make sure the body angles are perfect and the panels are free of imperfections and the whole body is hand sanded before heading to paint. There's even a step in the build process where the doors are deliberately misaligned. This is because there's a strong chamfer line that runs from nose to tail. So the builders know that when the car is fully assembled, the doors will droop a bit compared to where they are set during the initial assembly process. They account for this so that when the car is done, the doors sit perfectly in line. When a Century is ready for paint, it gets more attention than your average Corolla going down that assembly line. The standard amount of coats for a new Toyota is four, but the Century gets seven. The undercoats need to be perfect, and Toyota wants a clear, clean mirror finish, especially for the black painted versions. Toyota offers these in just four colors, black, blue, red, and silver. The monthly sales goals for the current Century, just 50 units per month and the starting price for each one is around $150,000. For a brief time, Toyota exported the second gen Century to markets around the world, but the automaker stopped that when it brought out the third gen Century. This one isn't coming here, but I wish it would because this thing stands out in a classically cool way. It reminds me of our own big Lincolns and Cadillacs from the 60s, and I wish I could see these gliding down our roads here in the States. And occasionally, you do see some first and second gen cars that have been imported via Canada or shipped from Japan, but they're rare as can be, and this latest version won't be available for import for quite some time. And that makes it Forbidden Fruit. <laughs>